Buying parts to build your own PC with at the moment is a little bit like hunting for food during a zombie apocalypse. Even something as seemingly basic as just a tin of baked beans now has an average street value higher than a human life. So that's why when Anna came to me asking for a new PC, it struck my heart full of dread and fear because I knew I was going to have to gun battle eBay scalpers in the street and then just get infected with random venereal disease and just generally lose my innocence in the process and I wasn't really willing to do that. But then I remembered, wait, I have a butt ton of random pre-builds lying around. So I just need to scavenge core components from them and then turn it into a, a, a system for Anna. And luckily, I didn't actually have to scavenge that many components, so it turned out pretty well. But before we get into the video, let's have a look at today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by DataCap, which is a brilliant way to learn some new data analysis skills. DataCap has over 300 interactive courses that use an XP leveling system that makes you feel smarter than you really are. One of the courses that I started out with was an introduction to data analysis using Python. And even though I am really bad at this kind of thing and have no background with this, it was pretty easy to pick up what I had to do. What's also cool is that all of the lessons are bite-sized and they have a mobile version of the app, which means you can learn on the go. A data camp subscription starts at only $25 a month for unlimited access to all of their courses. So use the link in my description below so that you can try out the first chapter of any of the courses for free to see if you like it. Thank you very much again, DataCamp, for sponsoring this video. And this is it. This is the pile of stuff that's going to turn into Anna's build. Now, saying it's, it's a scavenger build is maybe a little bit of an exaggeration, considering that we're just going to use two core components uh, from pre-builds, starting off with this which is an RX 5700 and it's a weird OEM version from an Alienware pre-built that I did a video on a while ago. It's not the best looking card, but it's got a really good cooler on it. I really like this card and it should be more than enough power for what Anna needs to do with it. And then next up, we're taking the CPU out of this, out of this Acer Loser Nitro Suckface Edition. It's got an i5-10400F in it, which again is not a crazy powerful CPU, but it's got six cores and 12 threads, so it's going to be more than enough uh, for Anna's use case. Now, one of the nice things about the CPU from that Loser Face Edition not being a K variant is it can't overclock, because as we all know, K stands for cover clock, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, it can't overclock, so it means we don't have to spend much money on a motherboard. So I went with this H470i gaming board from Strix, which is a surprisingly affordable board considering how well featured it is. So yeah, I'm interested to see how this board does. RAM wise, she's getting 16 gigs of Ryzen compatible RAM. Uh, that's a bit awkward. But anyway, it's a 3200 megahertz kit, which again doesn't matter because we're using an H470 motherboard. So the max RAM speed we're going to get is going to be like 2900 megahertz anyway. The cooler that I'm using is a tiny little blacked out Noctua cooler. And I'm I'm a bit worried about how this is going to perform. But that 10400 isn't a particularly high TDP chip. So it should be okay. But we may have to swap this out at some point. It'll be interesting to see how this holds up. In terms of SSD, I'm going with a 500 gig WD black NVMe drive. I actually really like these SN750 drives. They're very high performance and they're reasonably priced. Uh, the power supply is this little SF600 that Corsair sent over for an IKEA desk drawer PC ages ago, but that whole system has been retired. So we're going to use it in this ITX system for Anna's build. And then last but not least, we have the case, which I'm actually really excited about. It's a Cooler Master NR200P and I've wanted to do a build in this bad boy since the moment that it was first announced. It's a very reasonably priced ITX option, so that's pretty cool. And we got the white one, so it's going to be all nice and kawaii on, on Anna's desk. Now, first things first, we're going to have to rip the guts out of this Acer Nitro 50 to get to that CPU so that we can, we can have CPU. Look at that thermal paste application. Yeah, look at this little cooler. If this can handle the 10400F, which it kind of can't super well, but it, it's okay, uh, then that Noctua is going to be perfectly fine. 
And there is our 10400F saved from its pre-built prison. Now I really hope that this doesn't have the demon of Acer Nitro Loser suck face in it. Um, yeah, because then it's just going to infect all of those new parts. But hopefully it's good. Hopefully we're fine. Look at how tiny this little Noctua cooler is. It's so small and cute. I hope it's gonna be okay. Look at how good that looks. This tiny little cooler just integrates so well with this setup, which is a bit of a shame, actually, considering the fact that we're pairing it with with this graphics card. Um, yeah, that's <laughs> it doesn't really match match the aesthetic too well. But considering how it's going to be mounted in the case, you're not really going to see that bit. Uh, so it should still be fine. I'm still very curious about what kind of thermals we're going to be getting, considering how flush that really is. But it should be fine. I'm, I'm excited. Oh, yeah, no, no, it's just a faint light, but we're booted! Yay! Good, good, we're good. Um, it's a little bit bigger than I was expecting. I mean, it's not massive, but it's, it's not, it's not tiny at all. It's done, I think. Um, so over here, we have decided to go with the graphics card just facing down. There's going to be a mesh panel on the side, so you're not really going to be able to see into it anyway. And I think it works a little bit better than having it just like vertically mounted across. Uh, but we'll see what the thermals are like and then we'll decide from there. I actually think it looks pretty good. Um, the cable management's not amazing, but that's okay. Uh, again, you're not really going to see into the side of the case. When it comes to these fans up here, I actually turned them around so they're going to be pulling air into the case so that we have like positive pressure in the case. Again, I don't know if this is the best idea. Uh, I'll see what thermals look like and then maybe I'll turn them around um, and we'll reevaluate from there. But yeah, that's the end result. I think it's a pretty, pretty cool looking little system. So we're done, it's it's finished, um, the build is over, and it was fine. Uh, it, it does feel a little bit like, because I'm not used to having this many options while building in a case, so you kind of just have to stab around in the dark a bit and then hope that the configuration that you've ended up with is is good. Um, the thermals aren't amazing, but it's, it's a tiny little cooler. We'll, we'll get into that in the gaming section and why it may not be important. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty easy case to build in. Uh, so with that, let's have a look at the actual gaming results to see how, how this system stacks up. When it comes to the gaming experience on this system, it is really good. At 1080p, it just blows through games at over 100 frames per second. That RX 5700 with that cooler on it, is, it's just such a good card and it offers such a smooth gaming experience. 
Um, the thermals on the CPU aren't great, though. While playing Battlefield 5, initially, I was getting like 90 plus degrees Celsius on the CPU, which was obviously not ideal. But then I went to the back and I just like tightened the cooler down more. And then after that, the temperatures dropped to like the mid 80s, which is still higher than you'd like. But uh, Battlefield 5 is very CPU intensive compared to a lot of other games. And Anna has a 4K display on her desk, so it means that the bit of gaming that she's going to do is going to be in 4K, which means the CPU is just going to sit there twiddling its thumbs. It's not really going to have to do anything, so that's fine, you know. I think it's going to work very well for the use case. You can see here while playing GTA 5 that, like, the CPU thermals are way lower. And then furthermore, when you move over to, like, Escape from Tarkov, which barely recognizes that you have a CPU in your system, uh, the temperatures are even lower and they're, they're well within the comfort range. So we'll see how it goes for, for Anna's use case. When it comes to the noise, just idle while on the desktop and stuff, it is whisper quiet. Uh, but when you start gaming and that CPU utilization climbs, then you can hear that that cooler is struggling to keep its life together. Like, it's, it, it, it gets real noisy. Uh, but again, that may not be an issue. We'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Oh my god, the case is so cute! Oh, they look like little kitty cat ears. So at the end of the day, it's a nice, fast, quiet little system in, in the correct situation. And I think that the components that we scavenged from pre-built builds are, are gonna hold up fine. It seems like the, the gremlins that normally live in Acer Loser Nitro Suckface editions didn't creep over in the CPU from the little bit of desktop usage that I've had out of it. It seems very stable and there's not weird stuff going on. So I'll keep you posted on that, but it, it, it seems like it's okay for the moment. Uh, so with that, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And until the next one, bye-bye.